Good day. Um, today we are uh, I'm doing a short video on converting product of sums to sum of products because um, it looks like a lot of people are having trouble with this specific conversion. That's it. Um, we are having a little bit of trouble. I think on assignments. So now let's start with sum of products to product of sums. So we have started with the sum of products expression. So this is a sum of products. So sum uh, or operator of product terms and terms. So there's A and B or C or A, B not or C not and A not or B, uh, A not and B and C not or a not and B not and C not. So this is a sum of products. So very important that the expression is in standard form. Standard form means that all the variables that are available has to be in every single term. So these, that I call a term, that's another term, that's another term, that's another term. So in this case we have A, B and C terms or C variables and they are present in every single one of them. Now I've seen students adding a D term when there's no D term in any of these terms. So you don't need to. If there's A, B, and C variables, then you only have A, B, and C. But if there's a D, then you have to add a D. Okay, so first thing you do from this expression, you set up a truth table. But firstly, it's very basic to understand what is SOP. So again, this is the SOP standard form, but why is SOP and why do we look at ones? So we do we use ones with SOP because there's only one unique combination for this term to be one. Okay, and it's all about the unique combination. So it's if A is one, B is one, and C is one, then this term is one. But if A or B or C are zeros, it doesn't matter what the other terms are, the other variables are, it'll always be zero. So let's say C is zero. If B is one and A is one, it doesn't matter with this and operator, this will always be zero. And the same with all of these others. So there's only one unique combination which make this one. And that's what we want. We want the unique combination making this one. There's only one unique combination making this one. And when A is zero, B is zero, and C is zero, that makes this term one. Because zero not is one, zero not is one, zero not one. So this is one. So if, if A is one, it becomes a zero because the not, and this whole term is zero. So there's only one unique combination making it one due to the AND operator. So now I have to set up the truth table, focusing on the unique combinations, making the terms 1. So this is our uh, expression F, and these are our unique combinations, making the term 1. So let's start with A, B, and C. So that if all of these variables are 1, we our expression is 1. So A and B and C, 1, our expression is 1. Here we have A and B naught and C naught. So if A is 1, B is 0, and A is C is 1, then the expression is 1. And that's SOP. Um, now, A naught, B, and C naught. So if A is 0, B is 1, and Z C is 0, then our expression is 1. So that's 0 becomes a 1, this is a 1, and 0 becomes a 1, so this is all 1. And here is our last one, A naught, B naught, C naught. So if A is 0, B is 0, C is 0, our term is 1. So now we filled in our SFP into our truth table. The next step is we fill in all the other open spaces of our expression as zeros. So that is, so for all the other combinations of this is zeros, and that then is POS. So wherever we have a zero, we have a POS. Now when we look at POS, like we looked at SOP, this is a standard POS term. And it's the opposite of SOP. So for SOP, we looked at ones. Here we look at zeros. Because there's only one unique combination which would make this term a zero. Because it's an OR operator, 
anything odd with a one is one. It doesn't matter what the other variables are. If A is one, B and C can be whatever they want to be, this term will always be one. So there's not a unique combination in terms of ones, but there is a unique combination in terms of zero. There's only one combination to make this zero. If A is zero, B is zero, and C is also zero, then this is zero. So now, because of this operation, right? So for this reason, for POS, we look at zeros. So once again, back to our tooth table, we have zeros here, which is our POS. And now we write out our POS terms like this. So wherever we have a zero, we have A or B or C not. So this, this substituted into this term here would give us zero. So if we put zero there, B is also zero, and C is one, C not, making zero. So we have zero or zero or zero, which gives us zero. Same with this, um, A or B not or C not. If A is zero, B is a one, becomes B one not, which is a zero, and also C, C not, which is zero, which gives us zero. Same here. We have A not or B or C. If A not, uh, which is a one, becomes zero, zero or zero or zero equals zero. And the same with the last one, which is A not or B not or C. So if one not becomes, becomes zero, one not becomes a zero, and zero. So if we all this together, we have zero. And that is our POS, the unique combination making this term zero. We write it down, and that's our answer. So very important to remember, SOP is the unique term making this one. POS is a unique combination of the variables making this term zero. Now we look at doing POS to SOP. So this is a POS function or expression. But we have a problem. It's not in the standard form. So if we count our variables, we have A, we have B, and we have a C. So that means we have three variables, and there must be three variables in all of these terms, and there's only two. So we take it to standard form first, always standard form. And we do this like we did in the other um, lectures. Here we have C missing, so we um all C and not C to the expression, which this is always zero. This will always be zero, so we're not adding anything to our expression really. And here we have the A missing, so we all in A and not A. And we expand the brackets, this will be A, B, or C, and A or B or C not. This becomes A or B or C, and this becomes A not or B or C. Now, just important to mention, we have a double here, so they actually cancel out. Well, one of them cancels out, and we're left with only the one term. But um, it doesn't really matter, because if you fill in the truth table, they would occupy the same space in truth tables. It doesn't really matter. So now we have the final standard form. So now we transfer it to truth table. So remember, these are our three terms. Uh, we're looking for zeros, so the unique combination which would make this term zero. And that is, if A is zero, B is zero, and C is zero, in this term, it would be zero. Same here. If A, if that is a one, which becomes a not, not one, which is zero, and zero or zero, this becomes zero. And same here, we have A not or B not or C not, here we have if a not or b not or c not this is a one not becomes a zero b not becomes a zero so zero or zero or zero equals zero so now we filled in our pos terms now once again we have a duplicate term here but because they occupy the same space um, we don't really need to worry about it now wherever we don't have zeros we add ones and that's our SOP terms. So, once again, POS, we look at zeros. SOP, we look at ones. So what would make this term one? So we have, this needs to be A naught, B naught, and C. 
to be one. So here we have A naught and B naught and C next one. Here we have A naught, B, C naught is one. So that becomes that. Same here, we have A naught to make this a one, B and C mark one. And here we have all one, so it's A, B and C, and this is our SFB term. So <coughs> you basically have three steps if you want to convert SFB to BOS or uh, back again. The first step is uh, to make sure that the expression you have, whether it's SFB or POS, is in its standard form. Convert it to its standard form. From there, you transfer it to a truth table. Remember, SOP, liquid unique combinations making it one. If you're looking at POS, it's unique combinations making it that term zero. So you fill in the truth table. And the third step is you fill in the missing or the gaps with either ones or zeros, depending on what you need. And then write down the expression that you just filled in. And that is conversion of SAP to POS. So if you follow this, you probably won't go wrong. And uh, also a little tip is that you would have the amount of expressions as lines in the truth table, right? So we are, here we have three variables, which means we have a truth table of eight lines. So we would need eight expressions. We will have the sum of SOP expressions, but the sum of POS expressions should be eight. And if we have four, then we would have 16 lines. So the sum of SOP and the sum of POS expressions would be 16. Okay, I hope this helped and cleared up a little bit of the confusion.